Hi, it's Teresa again, your La Mat traveller. I have always been fascinated by mountains. But then, when I am standing in front of one, I get rather anxious. My far-sightedness vanishes. Nonetheless, I want to get to know the mountains and its indwellers and understand how life works here. Le Mat told me about a social cooperative in Cadora, which despite the big financial crisis have managed to create many jobs. By doing this, they have shown that social cooperatives not only serve the single disadvantaged person, but influence and contribute to the overall job market. Social cooperatives function extensively in the communal sphere as well as the economic and are also socially sustainable. And off we go to the Dolomites to visit the cooperative in Cadora. Ciao Teresa, benvenuta in Cadora. Luca is already waiting for me at the Calalzo train station. The weather in the mountains changes quickly. But Luca ensures me that I will not be bored, even if it should rain. There is always something to discover around here. A couple of minutes later, we arrive in Perarollo at the bar Corvo de Zate. Benvenuta Teresa, benvenuta a Perarollo, nelle nostre Dolomiti bellissime. The bar is in Palazzo Lazarus, as are the association's holiday flats. The apartment has a huge lounge with stone floors and there is place enough for nine guests. The kitchen has everything a kitchen might need. The rooms are warm and comfortable. It may be hard to believe, but there are even feather beds. Perarollo reveals its rich past, which had a blossoming woodworking industry in the 19th century. During that time, the much-loved queen Margarita of Savoy used to spend her holidays in Perarollo, exactly in the same building in which I, Teresa, am now residing. Today there is no industry anymore and no economic boom. Instead of traffic, I hear the sound of the rivers Piave and Boite that flow together right in front of my window. In Perarollo there is a museum where one can learn everything there is to know about timber rafting and the lumber industry. Elena, who lives in Perarollo herself, guided me through the museum and told me about the millions of tree trunks that floated down the river to the sawmill. It's a lovely day and I feel like hiking. I walk uphill for half an hour and in front of me there is the abandoned village called Damos. An almost fairy-like chapel which was originally dedicated to the protection of the woodcutters. Fuggi, fuggi, fuggi da questa All along the old Roman road, in the so-called Borgata del Costa, there are the houses of the most important historical people. A little further, I pass the old station of the former Brenner railway line, and I have arrived. Oh, yes. The cooperative Cadora runs a cafe right next to the bicycle path, which follows the former railway line through the Dolomites. Cyclists and the residents of the area both enjoy going to the cafe. We are all invited to go to Vallecina for dinner to get to know one another better. 
The cooperative is not only about the assuredly important financial earnings, but it is rather more about establishing possibilities for these difficult regions to survive throughout the year. The abandoning of agriculture and forestry over the last 50 years has led to the forest spreading out uncontrollably. The paths are no longer passable. Which is why the care of the landscape has become a very important task for the cooperative Kadora. I arrive in a magical place. The thermal sources of Lagole where even during prehistoric times various sacred rituals took place. In the afternoon, Luca accompanies me to the Glasses Museum in Pieve. Allora Teresa ti ho portato a vedere questo museo perché qui viene raccontata la storia dell'occhialeria in Cadore che è stata una storia importante per questa terra. Here in Cadore, for over a hundred years, glasses production is legendary, poignantly showing the coming into being of the wealth of capitalism. Nonetheless, in the last couple of years, the whole industry has almost disappeared. What remains is unemployment, bringing with it huge social problems. One possibility to overcome this dilemma is offered by the social cooperative with which an economic common welfare can be established. I continue with my travels through Cadora and meet up with friends from the association. Diego is an artist blacksmith and has a smithy in a former glasses factory. The Talamini brothers and their families used to work in the factory and are now producing cheese and meat. Today I am going on a trip to Rifugio Ermo dei Romiti on Monte Frappe in the Medje. The refuge has been managed by Livio and his family since he no longer works in the sawmill. The Ermo dei Romiti is not only for interested mountaineer and hikers, but also for anyone looking for peace and spirituality in the mountain. There are uncountable paths in Cadore. But what I enjoy most of all are the many mountain huts found along the way and the possibility of getting to know new people there. Lucas says there are more than 40 huts in the region. My holiday is nearly over. But before I leave, I really want to go to Pieve once more, the birthplace of the painter Tiziano Vicelio and the seat of the local feudality in the 15th century, Palazzo della Magnifica Comunità. Although gastronomic offers are plenty in Pieve, I decide to opt for a meal at Michaela's and Roberta's vegetarian restaurant. My journey is at an end and I set off more than happy on my homeward journey. Thank you Lamat, you have once again introduced me to special people and special places.